Hi, I'll be showing you how to calibrate this ancient camera today. Links to the tools in the description below. Let's get going. But wait, I hear you say. Why would I want to calibrate this ancient thing? Well, have I got something for you? Think sweet panorama shots, photospheres, image stabilization, 3D point cloud scanning. All of these things you only get with a well calibrated camera. If you're still with me, let's cover the process and what we need. The process is really simple. Take your camera, print a calibration board, record a bunch of images, load them up into your calibration software, hit a couple of buttons and you're done. But hang on, remember these three things and your calibration results will be even better. Coverage, convergence, quality. What do I mean by this? First, coverage. You'll be recording a bunch of images to calibrate your camera. Make sure that every pixel sees the calibration board at least once. Quality. Make sure your pictures are sharp, well illuminated and motion blur free. Convergence. Make sure you have a couple images at least with a strong angle between your camera and the calibration board. You want to make sure that you can see the lines converging in the images towards the vanishing point. With that out of the way, I'll be calibrating on my curved screen here, which doesn't make too much of a difference as the calibration software should be able to correct for errors in the calibration board. So just lean back and watch me calibrating the camera. With the SD card loaded up, we have a few more steps ahead of us. First, we must create a dataset folder, then load the dataset folder into CamCalib, run the calibration and save our results. So let's start with constructing the dataset folder. I'll create a new folder and name it after the current date. CamCalib expects for each camera that you calibrate, to have its own subfolder in the dataset folder. So here I'll create another folder and call it Hero4 after the camera we just recorded data off of. Open up the folder and paste the image data into it. Let's quickly review that everything's in order. If I skip through the images, everything looks good. With CamCalib loaded, you have two options. You can either load a ROS bag or you can use a dataset folder, just like the one we created before. So we're going to select load data. Navigate to our dataset folder, mark the dataset folder we've created, and hit choose. This loads up all the images. We can skip through all the images CamCalib has loaded here, just to make sure that everything's all right. The next step is to tell CamCalib which calibration pattern it's supposed to look for in the image dataset we've just loaded up. I've already got this pre-configured in CamCalib, but you might want to set it up for yourself. This is a 12 by 6 April Tag Grid Calibration Board. Under New Board, I'll select April Board and hit Create. It's a 12 by 6 calibration board. I use a ruler to measure the tag size on screen, which was 3.7 centimeters. And the ratio between the small and the large rectangles is 0 0.3. With that set up, all I do is hit the save button and the newly configured calibration board will show up here on the top right hand side. The next step is to hit detect features. CamCalib will now go through all the image data and look for the checkerboard corners in these images as well as their corresponding April tag IDs. Now that CamCalib is finished, it will highlight all the IDs it could find. So if we zoom into the images, we see the exact locations of each feature point as well as its identification number. You can also skip through the individual images and their detections and review the quality. If you find a low quality picture, you can also exclude it by unselecting this check mark next to selected in the dataset. Once you've selected all the images for calibration, all you need to do is select a camera model. CamCalib offers four different lens models, of which the last two are suitable for fish eye lenses. So we'll select Canala Brandt here and make sure that Optimize Object Points is selected. What this does is estimate fabrication errors in the calibration board itself, which is important for us here because I have the calibration pattern projected onto a curved screen with 1.8 meters radius. So it's not perfectly flat and CamCalib will only be able to deal with it if you select this option. So let's hit Calibrate. 
Once you hit calibrate, you can watch CamCalib doing its magic. On the lower right hand side, you'll see the reprojection error decreasing until it converges. Now that CamCalib has converged, you can see the calibration results right here. We can save these results to a YAML file, which I'll place in the dataset folder and call it intrinsics. We can also generate a PDF report, which is useful if you need to get in touch with the CamCalib support team. This contains all the information they need to help you. We're all done, the camera's calibrated. The next step is to build our own applications and use this data. So let's review what CamCalib produced for us. These are the two files we saved at the end uh, before closing CamCalib. The first one is the calibration data itself. If I open this up, it's a text file and it contains the camera matrix parameters as well as the distortion parameters. It also names which camera model was used so you can efficiently produce an undistortion map from these parameters. The second file is the report. This is a PDF file that contains the final reprojection error, which calibration model was used, what the camera name was, when it was calibrated, which pattern was used and how many frames were used to calibrate it. It also contains the calibration parameters listed once again. On the next page, we'll see the deflection of the calibration board. And as you see here, the center of the board and the edge of the board were about 2.4 centimeters apart, which lines up very well with what we would expect from 1.8 meters curve radius of a screen I calibrated on. And on the final pages, you see the reprojection error for each feature point in each image that was taken while recording the calibration data. Now that we're done with calibrating the camera, let's finish off this guide with showing what the results of the camera calibration can do. I've prepared a short example that you can download from our Bitbucket repository. Links to the repository in the description below. Now let's execute this example. I'll load up a terminal and execute the setup script. This will install all the dependencies you need in a virtual environment. That's it, the virtual environment set up. Before we execute the source code, let's review what files come with this example. We've got the main.py file. This contains all the essential source code to perform image undistortion. I've also provided the calibration results from the previous steps inside CamCalib tutorial data under intrinsics.yaml, as well as one picture from a different scene I've taken with the same camera. So you see this picture is heavily distorted, uh, as you would expect from a fisheye lens. Uh, also, there's a watch placed in the scene just to show you what time it is and to make sure that we're actually dealing with the same undistorted image in the next step. With that out of the way, let's execute the main.py file. So we'll first need to jump into our virtual environment. Now you'll see on the lower left hand side signified by venv uh, that we're in our virtual environment and now we can execute the main.py file. That's it, it's run through all the necessary steps, generated an undistortion map and undistorted the one picture we've handed it in the Hero 4 folder. Let's review what picture it's created. So here you see the uh, 001.jpg has been undistorted and placed in the same folder under the name 001 underscore ud for undistort.jpg. This was the original input image and this is what comes out after we apply the undistort map. So as you see, the curved lines that were distorted by the fish eye lens become straight again because we've accounted for the distortion parameters and removed their effect in this image. So from this we can take our next steps in application development and create more advanced computer vision applications. Thanks for checking out this guide. If it provided value to you, please like, subscribe and hit the bell button. We also have a constantly growing archive of articles at camcalib.io slash blog. So check us out there as well. Until next time, bye bye.